In the last episode of the story of Baga, a newly resurrected Baga sought to find a home base. They found the perfect spot inside the mountain near the painless fortress. Baga the Undead and his new ally Flak the Alchemist worked together to slay the orc that was in charge of this territory. They claimed this area for their own and set up base camp. Soon after that a legion of runts arrived. They wanted to pledge their swords and their lives to a newly resurrected Baga. But they quickly became overzealous and charged into battle against the Painless Fort. They were all slain by these gargantuan Olongs. While this was happening, mercenaries were sent out to slay other Baga variants. Baga the Backstabber was caught off guard by these mercenaries and had his arms ripped clean off. Thankfully, one of the variants, Bag of the Abuse, was able to fight off these powerful mercenaries, killing them both. And that's caught us up with the story of Baga. Enjoy this episode, guys. It's going to be a good one. After the recent mercenary attacks, Talion was patrolling the front gate of the fort. He was making sure no more assassins would be sent out to kill Baga variants, as well as ensuring that no more idiot runs would attack the fort until he showed up. <laughs> He was then set upon by Bagger the Backstabber, who had cheated death. He had his arms literally ripped off his body. I have no idea how he was able to come back. Talion, completely startled, rushed in to engage him in combat, fighting off pure instinct. After laying a few arrows into this bag of skull, Talion got some distance. He had to think about what was going on. How was this bagger back? And then it happened. Bagger was sent up into the sky in a blazing inferno from Talion's drake. What a short-lived comeback. Talion couldn't help but laugh to himself. What a pathetic display. Honestly, I can't believe he came back and died that fast. Just pathetic. What was this bagger doing? What did he think he could achieve in coming back like that? And how did he reattach his arms? Talion was in utter shock. Just look at these scenes. Fire was raging all around. And then moments later, literally moments later, while Talion is still patrolling, this happens. I, in my search for you, I've walked a lot of miles and spilt a lot of blood. But I have you now, and you're not getting away. That's right, Bagger the Pretender had walked all of the way from Minas Morgul to hunt Talion down. I couldn't bloody believe it. This orc had already started a massive, massive rebellion in Minas Morgul by creating so many duplicates of himself, so many different types of towers, but he hits fire. And that's exactly what Talion has right now. No one treats me like that! No Uruk, no Oluk, and certainly no man! One of Bagger the Pretender's tower variants had showed up to help him, but this only enraged him. He didn't need the help against Talion. Talion's attention was now taken up by these two towers, which Bagger the Pretender capitalized on. The Pretender stabbed his poison spear straight through Talion, right in front of the Painless Fortress. This sent a message to the Painless, a message that Bagger the Pretender and his towers were allies. You should have known better than to face me. After this kill, Bagger the Pretender was promoted and given a place inside the Painless Fortress. He became the official bodyguard to one of the Painless Warchiefs. But the lesser tower he brought along did not get the same treatment. After Talion awoke, he received information that Flak the Alchemist was trying to get revenge on some of the mercenary Ologs that were killing Baga variants. Hey! There is the Pretender! With all the fleeing you do, you probably run fast enough to have a chance at catching me! Flak had lured these Olog mercenaries straight into a trap. He was leading them right over his poison bombs. Talion then jumped in to help. He knew these Ologs were pretty strong and that Flak would definitely struggle with them. Flak was strong, but not as strong as the Blood Flood Olog and his elite guard. Flak's archers above. Truly he'd set an amazing trap for these Blood Flood mercenaries. Talion hit the floor with a powerful fire attack, prompting the Blood Flood's attention. Oh, he can wait. I'll gladly kill you first. The absolute chaos. Thank goodness the undead Bagger wasn't there. The Blood Flood tried to strike Talion with his poison weapon. Talion was dashing around the battlefield, hitting orc after orc, while arrows rained in, weakening the Blood Flood's forces. Persistent fire and explosive attacks had weakened the Blood Flood down. Flak moved in for a massive flaming blow. But seconds before Flak could finish off the Blood Flood, Talion swooped in to dominate him. Talion peered into the mind of the Blood Flood Olog. There he found hidden painless secrets. Secrets of their fort, 
secrets of their plan. With one of these mercenaries taken care of, Talion summoned his Drake mount to fly to the next. But it didn't answer the call. <laughs> Bag of the Backstabber had cheated death again, but how? Talion was completely taken aback, which led to the Backstabber landing a few blows on him and finishing Talion off with his massive flaming axe. The Backstabber then did his celebratory dancing around like an absolute madman. This kill on Talion earned him some serious levels. Talion awoke and was hell-bent on speaking to this bagger that kept coming back to life. How was he doing this? And for what reason? He tracked this evil bagger variant down to this small camp. He let his drake just go to town on the walls. Neither bagger hated this drake for obvious reasons. Talion perfected his slow-motion cool guy walk. He was hell-bent on finding this backstabbing orc, and he wasn't going to let anyone get in his way. You know, now that I think about it, his name is Bagger the Backstabber. Uh, that might have been a pretty clear indication that he was going to do this, but yeah, nonetheless, how does he keep coming back to life? These questions have to be answered. Look at that orc. That orc tried to be a hero. Not today. Throwing knives in your back. Goodbye. There he is, hanging out with a recently disgraced Blood Flood Olog. Talion shot him in the head, but it didn't do anything. He moved on in, smashing down. All he wanted to do was talk to this bagger. He wanted to reason with him. He had to get information, but the Blood Flood struck first. Poison coursing through your veins. It is the will of the Dark Lord. As Talion went to disable the Blood Flood, Bagger moved him with an aggressive, powerful attack. He followed this up with a huge blow, killing Talion once again. Bagger then does his fun little happy dance that he does when he kills people. It really reminds me of a dog when it's about to get fed. Another Grave Walker kill, another promotion and level up for Bagger the Backstabber. The Blood Flood Olog was also slightly redeemed for assisting in this kill. And then something I didn't expect happened. The Earth Scorcher just randomly fought and killed the lesser tower creature. He's gone. The Earth Scorcher just craves violence. He doesn't want peace, only problems. After Talion came back to life, he charged back to the area Bagger was in, absolutely furious at what had happened. He started smiting down orcs, exploding barrels, causing general chaos and fire. He then noticed this horrible, satanic relic hanging up. This was Talion's body. This is what they'd done to him. But this wasn't the last time Bagger killed him. This was a previous time, possibly long ago. Could this be the source of his new resurrection powers? There was a weird feeling in the air, and suddenly Talion was being struck down again by this Bagger the Backstabber. Could it be the close proximity to this evil relic? Talion didn't know. It went off again, and suddenly Talion was back exactly where he was before. Only this time, he was angry. He was furious at what had happened. He caused even more chaos than before, shooting multiple barrows and spraying poison into the air. Bagger the Backstabber was down, and Talion was going to work cutting down orcs all over the place, while the rest of them burned at his hand. More explosives went off as Talion was seething with rage. He wanted all these orcs to burn. He was not going to be killed again by this Bag of the Backstabber. He didn't care how powerful this relic was, and what kind of weird glitches it was causing to his reality. It happened again! And Talion found himself on the floor, but this time he was able to catch Bagger's flaming blades. He then set about destroying this Bagger before he was ambushed. My burning is the Lord of Rhyme to slay my critics one at a time. The Rhymer had come to Bagger's aid. How long had he been recruiting trips for? How long was he planning this betrayal? Or was he just mad the painless Ologs had, had ripped his arms off? Yeah, yeah, I'd be mad too. Maybe that's what it is. 
Hear my rhyme. Uh, the rhymer had downed Talion and humiliated him. This only enraged Talion even more. A massive poison attack to the ground had Baga coughing his guts up. The poison eventually seeped its way into Baga's immune system, leading to his downfall, leading to his demise. You can see his body twitching with the poison. Talion didn't feel a single drop of remorse. One like equals one prayer. Talion wasn't done yet. His anger needed to be satiated. He tracked down the Blood Flood and the Rhymer Orc. They've made a natural alliance. Those bastards. Talion thought to himself. They think they can kill me? The Gravewalker? The absolute cheek of them. He took out his bow and swiftly took out the two guards charging him. I see an unexpected treat. The Ranger Man. Who will soon be meat? Whoa! He rhymed treat and meat. Truly the intellect of this orc was very, very high. Higher even than Calibrimborms, possibly, hmm? But enough chit-chatter. Talion wasn't messing around. He was filled with rage. He immediately took out all of the elite guards. He saw what they did to Bagger the Backstabber. Even though Bagger the Backstabber, he had his arms ripped off by these guys, is now on their side. Anyway. It doesn't matter, he's dead. The Rhymer became enraged, but that didn't stop Talion. Another poison blast delivered straight to their veins. The Rhymer succumbed to the poison. Talion had gotten his revenge. He was halfway there to feeling normal again. But he had to kill the Blood Flood. He couldn't let this horrible beast live. Deadliest poisons of Mordor flow from this weapon. Come, have a taste. Oh, you've got poison, mate. Well, Italian's also got poison, and he's got more of it. Look at that, covered in poison, absolutely soaked in it, dripping in poison, and he's dead. Goodbye, blood flood. Talion rejoiced as he died, seemingly to poison. After boasting that he had a very powerful poison weapon, Although he did try to explode in poison to get his own back, but it didn't work. Talion was too quick. And look, we have another orc trying to be a hero. Sorry, kid. Not happening today. Talion then traveled into another world. He needed to replace Bag of the Backstab. There he found a betrayed variant that could still speak. So it falls to me to put you down. Typical. Oh, I have to do everything else around here. God, I almost forgot how good Baga's voice sounds. Just listen to that. Beauty. Baga ended up getting the drop on Talion, but Talion was ready. Poison blast to the floor with Sen Baga flying. He needed to get some distance. He needed to talk to this Baga. He needed to get him to join his cause. Talion spotted a painless scout that had followed him here, clearly investigating him to see what he was doing. Talion fought to kill him first. He had to get rid of him before he could convince Baga to join his army. It didn't take long for Talion to kill him, plunging his sword directly into the Olog's massive belly. Your neck falls under your blade. When is it enough? I gotta say, his last bit of dialogue, he actually spoke some truth. When will it be enough? When will it be enough? It'll be enough whenever all of the horrible painless Ologs are dead and buried. His body clattered to the floor. This only enraged Baga. Your dueling skills are sloppy. Come, I'll show you what I mean. Of course, showing you means killing you in this case. He's just such a savage. That voice, my goodness, wow, I forgot how much he just rips into you. This is probably why Talion always makes his baggers incapable of speaking, or at least incapable of intelligent thought, because Talion just gets roasted. After Talion had proven his strength, he was able to recruit this bagger and move him into his team. Talion soon returned to the home base. Oh, you're a hard one. But I know all your tricks, and some others besides. Where he found another Bag of the Backstabber variant taking on a merciless orc. This Bag of the Backstabber though was friendly to Talion and Bagger's cause. Though let's be honest, from all that's happened so far, Talion was definitely wary of this Backstabber orc. 
The backstab Rourke charged in. He was trying to prove himself to Talion. He wanted a place in Baga's army. He picked up the merciless orc and raised him above his head before clattering his body to the ground. Shattering the back of this merciless orc. Talion told Baga that he'd earned a place in his army after that display of sheer strength. Talion then set off on his drake. Another attack was about to take place. Anyone touch supplies? Kill! Anyone come near supplies? Kill! Anyone look at supplies? Deep wound! Warning! Forgiving Olog, another one of the painless mercenaries. Defeated! Uh -huh. I was defeated! He was about to be ambushed by not one, not two, but three baggers, including Bagger the original. The baggers charged in and quickly surrounded the unforgiving Olog. He grabbed the bagger and punched him away, but it was to no avail. Bagger the abused cut him down where he stood. Surely this wasn't a fair fight. Three baggers against one? Talion then noticed a mysterious orc watching the fight. I have seen many things that will happen in days to come. A headless fell beast, a white hand, and most pressing, your death. They couldn't let this Sooth Slayer escape, so Bagger charged in, but he had a flaming weapon, which the undead original Bagger is terrified of. But nonetheless, we couldn't let this orc escape. Man surprised to see me, I think. We were ambushed by a dragon Olog, clearly coming to the aid of this other orc, but he still had to die. Talion shot the barrel to give him some time, and then finished off the Sooth Slayer. Am I meant to lie down and die? You first! But he had death defying. The dragon Olog pulled out his huge flamethrower and set the baggers ablaze. Thank god the undead bagger had already left, otherwise he may have died. Talion then elbowed the Sooth Slayer, absolutely destroying him. Huge elbow, KSI style, knocking him clean out. Then he got to work on the dragon Olog. One of our allies, the Necromancer Baga, heard the commotion and rushed over to help. He started summoning undead soldiers to fight the dragon. Baga the Abused then used this distraction to run behind the dragon Olog and cut him down, smashing his head in like a TV that your ex throws off the balcony. This was another instance of Baga the Undead, Baga the Original, Baga the Legend fleeing due to fire. This undead body wasn't going to suit him. Talion spoke to the remaining Bagas and they agreed what he must do. Talion was going to have to go to the Baga homeworld, the Baga safe haven. He needed information. He needed to get to the overlord of this fort, this safe haven for Bagas. I've heard of your fighting style. If the rumours are true, you're just drunkenly swinging that blade of yours around. Is that still the case? To do this, he'd have to cut down everyone that got in his way regardless of if they're baggers or not. Accompanying him was Bagger the Betrayed. He helped him infiltrate this fortress. I can see that you're engaged in an alchemical process. You wish to transform yourself with each death? But you will never become gold! You look sickly! Need a cup of broth before I slit your throat? <laughs> Never stop to wonder, if I had this much trouble with a war chief, what chance do I have against the Overlord? <laughs> Too fast for you! He's taking all my Please, please. 
After all that killing, Talion finally made it into the throne room. There he could confront the leader of this bag of safe haven. He needed information about powerful elixirs and tonics. One so powerful that they might just be able to bring back Bag of the Undead to his former glory. You've come a long way just to die at my feet. And there he was, Bag of the Alchemist, the leader of this sanctuary, keeper of all the Bag of Secrets. Talion just needed one minute to speak to him. Just enough time to get the answer to one question. But this throne room was absolute hell. Just look at how many explosive guys there are. What a hellish throne room. Fire everywhere, explosions everywhere, and two very savage bodyguards. Eventually Talion was worn down by the relentless explosions and fire attacks. But in the brief moment before Baga killed him, he was able to speak to him. Talion has a deep connection with all baggers, and thanks to this, he was able to get the information he needed within the split seconds before Bagger dropped the axe. Talion had gotten the information he needed, but before going back and facing the painless, he stopped off at another universe. There was an orc he needed to recruit, and here he is now. Massey the Betrayed. An insanely powerful version of Massey the Massive. Before Talion could jump in, he was ambushed. You see this? There are few problems that can't be solved with fire. And you're not one Boom of the Warbringer. As you can see, he's part of the Bagabog Rebellion. Clearly, he's caught wind of what's going on here and has sent one of his mercenaries to attack Talion. He mustn't want him to get his hands on this powerful Massey variant. Thankfully, this mercenary is a pale variant of Bagabog. Nowhere near as powerful. Talion quickly dispatches of him in the most embarrassing way possible by yeeting his body off a rooftop. A few floors up, a normal person might survive this. You'd think a strong orc would definitely survive this, but no, not these orcs. After that weak imitation of Bagabog was taken care of, Talion moved in to get a better look at the Massey. <laughs> Certainly looks strong, but how would he fare in a fight? Talion fired an arrow directly into his head, but it only clattered off. Talion then tested his bow on the other Olog's craniums. As you can see, this is more of a desired effect that Talion wanted. He then hurtled his body into a fireplace, exploding it, causing absolute chaos and summoning in Talion's Shelob horde. He then finished off the chaos by expelling his poison attack. Massey's bodyguard tried to help, but Talion hit him with piercing arrows directly into his skull before jumping in, dominating him, and shaming him right there in front of everyone. Massey was shocked and confused by what just happened. He summoned in explosive orcs to charge and explode on Talion, but he was too quick for them, dashing around before shooting them in the head with an arrow. After this, the fight was basically over. Talion moved in, dominated Massey, and Massey reluctantly agreed to join his fight. As soon as Talion arrived back in his universe, he put Massey to work. He tasked him with taking out one of the remaining painless mercenaries. Right, I've counted everything here. So don't any of you maggots get sticky fingers, or you'll have fewer than ten of them. With this orc dead, there'd be nothing left to do but attack the fort. The fight began and Talion jumped in to get a closer view, but he felt an unnerving presence behind him. Suddenly he felt cracks in his reality when he came to a familiar orc was grabbing his sword. It was Massey the Massive, the original. Clearly he wasn't happy Talion was replacing him with another Massey variant. Ah, it was good to hear that voice again. You want some amazing coincidence? 
I recently killed someone who looked almost exactly like you. Talion, shocked by Massey's return, fought on pure instinct, firing arrow after arrow into this horrible orc's head. A barrel explosion to cause some chaos, Massey lit up like the 4th of July. Massey, like the majority of the original Bagus Bandits, hates fire. He's also particularly terrified of executions. He ran off into the distance, terrified. Why did he ever show up? I don't know. This Massey truly is pathetic. Talion turned his attention back to the remaining painless mercenary. And then it happened. While attempting to flee, Massey the Massive ran over the other Massey's fire traps. These exploded, lit him ablaze, and burned him to death. Truly this is a pathetic ending to Massey the Massive's story. Can you really blame Talion for trying to get a better Massey? A stronger Massey variant? Together with the help of the new improved Massey, Talion was able to dispatch this final painless mercenary. Final painless mercenary dead. The attack could finally begin. Talion called the troops together. We were about to take this fortress and slay the leader of the painless. Allies from all over flocked to Vagus Call. We were ready to take the fort. We'd been building up to this fight for a long time. Finally! Would Baga the Undead, Baga the Original, get his revenge? Talion did his classic cool guy walk through the army's ranks. God, I really need to get him to teach me that sometime. How does he do it? How is he so cool? The Painless could hear the war cries of the army assembled. The Overlord came out to greet us. Conquering forts is tricky business. The way I hear it, the little man knows this firsthand. Our walls and towers rise high into the sky. And as every inch of flesh is splayed from your body, every limb pulled out of joint, Every bow broken, your scream shall rise even higher! With that speech over, it was time to hear from the baggers the Italian had handpicked to lead this force. <laughs> the only ones who will suffer here today are his lot, lads! You know it and I know it! Let's get in there and make sure they know it! Truly an awesome speech from the backstabber and the betrayed baggers. Here's the army. Bagger the abused. Flack the alchemist. Bagger the betrayed. Bagger the backstabber. Bagger the manhunter. The necromancer he was able to bring Bagger back to life. And finally, Massey. It truly was a beautiful speech from this bagger, and look at this flamboyant pose he's ended in. Talion gave the command and the armies charged in. Look at this beautiful red blood moon. That means blood is going to be spilt. The armies charged in with each battalion led by a different bagger variant. Talion started by taking out these pesky catapults. It didn't take him long. He was skilled from doing this. This wasn't his first rodeo. Those taking care of Talion could leap into battle, Assassin's Creed style. But for copyright reasons, we can't say it's related to Assassin's Creed at all. These are completely different games with completely different mechanics, definitely. I killed you already! And now you think you can beat me here? In this fortress? <laughs> that would be funny if it weren't so pitiful. There Talion met the first of many pain seekers. This one with a metal mask. Clearly this pain seeker had been free a lot. He was also accompanied by the traitor known as Baga the Pretender. Cloth. Arch. Very. This time, your grave shall be this fortress. A rogue Baga variant who'd stumbled upon the tower's armor. Once he put it on, it started to corrupt his mind. Talion got to work taking out lesser orcs, destroying banners and causing general chaos with explosive barrels. He then delivered an arrow into the Pretender's skull while dodging an orc that was thrown at him by the Painseeker. Talion is a champion Limbo Master, so this orc was never going to hit him. 
Massey was the first of this chosen death squad to make it over the walls and into the fight. Talion fought back to just how pathetic the original Massey was compared to this Massey. This Massey was a beast. At this point, the rest of the death squad broke through the front gate. I didn't see that. Most men, if they could cheat death, would not seek it out a second time. In an enemy stronghold, no less. You're not as clever as most men. The death squad pushed through the fortress and got all the way to the second gate. Standing in the way of this gate was a long bridge where the catapults would tear us to shreds. The death squad and Talion sprinted across the bridge as fast as they could, narrowly avoiding the catapults fire. Many of the painless forces were converging on this point, trying to put us down for good. It was an all out fight right in front of the second gate. Talion became slightly overwhelmed with the sheer number of Ologs here, being tossed around. One of them actually got him down and was almost able to finish him off. Able to dodge and counter this blow, and then back at the backstabber struck, slashing down the caveborn while he was distracted with Talion. You can see here that the fight was just general chaos at this point. Orcs everywhere, fire everywhere. Which is what led to Ur Massey the Betrayed burning Bag of the Pretender alive. This worried Talion. With the Pretender now dead, surely his various tower variants back at Minas Morgul would start to riot. During this, Flak the Alchemist was taken up by one of the painless Ologs, who then greeted Talion. Thanks to us getting those two kills and Flak the Alchemist's sacrifice, we were able to take this troublesome point. Which led to one of the higher up Painless War Chiefs joining the fight. Death to Sauron. But thankfully, Talion's previous creation, the Kingslayer, turned immortal Olog, was there to ambush him. While this betrayal was happening, Bag of the Manhunter took it upon himself to destroy the Earth Scorcher using his dark necromancer powers. With the remaining forces pushing through the gate, Baga charged ahead to try and help the Immortal. But just then, tragedy struck. Two of the Baga variants fell just outside the front gate fighting. Talon had run ahead and wasn't able to assist them. All we can do now is making sure their death wasn't in vain. They were only fighting to make sure Talion made it to the front room to kill this painless. Spurred on by the deaths of two Bagas, the Immortal cut down a pain lover right in front of Talion. This only angered the painless all along. Can't feel it. This was the most deranged, crazy, painless Olog in this fort. While this happened, Talion noticed that Massey was down. He had to fight these two epic Ologs here and now. He had to kill them in order to save Massey. At the other point, the Immortal was continuing to take down these Ologs. Talion handpicked and created this Olog from nothing, which is why he's so strong. He desperately tried to get Massey back on his feet. Painless was having none of it, hitting Talion with his huge mace and knocking him to the floor. Things were getting desperate. Talion was being manhandled by these huge Ologs. At this point, it was just him and the Manhunter, and they were struggling. Talion was succumbing to a hammer throw, and then it happened. Massey bled out and died. Talion could do nothing about it but watch. He ran over to Massey, but it was too late. He was gone. With only two Orcs remaining, this raid was in jeopardy. Talion fought for his life, and with the help of the Manhunter, he was finally able to take this point. With only one point left to take before the throne room, Talion met the final pain seeker Olog. How do you prefer to be cut in half? Lengthwise or crosswise? Spurred on by the deaths of the majority of his troops, Talion plunged his sword directly into the pain seeker's gut. My time is up. I wonder how much more you have, and whether it is too little or too much. Or go on absolute badass rage mode on him, cutting off his hand, slicing his torso, stabbing his back. The pain seeker dropped to the floor. He was dead. There was only one painless left now between Talion and the throne room. He took the last point. But this last painless was the toughest, most deranged Olog Talion had ever seen. Incapable of feeling pain while only becoming more enraged as he inflicts it on others. Feel it. Can't feel it. I can't feel it. But this didn't deter Talion. He plunged his blade directly into the Olog's stomach, before being tossed away like Gimli. He then dashed behind and was able to deliver another painful blow to this Olog, dropping him to his knees. I can't feel it. Death-defying. 
This old log rose again with a new wave of energy. His numbness for pain meant that he was an insanely tough opponent. Kali then glanced over. He could see the immortal was down, and back at the Manhunter. It was now a race against time to finish off this last Olog before he could heal them. Talion couldn't risk healing them with this Olog around. If he was downed again, he'd be executed. He had his hands full here. He could hear the screams of the Manhunter Orc as he took his last breath. It was a race against the clock to finish off this horrible, painless Olog before the Immortal Sir came to his wounds. Talion used the power of his Nazgul ring to slow down time. He sunk arrow after arrow into this painless head. He may not be able to feel anything, but eventually he would succumb to Talion's relentless attacks. The final blow came with a stab to the gut. Once this happened, Talion knew this Olog's body was broken. He then proceeded to dominate the Olog and shame him down. I can, I can feel it. With the final painless shamed and cast away, Talion revived the immortal Olog. Now all that was left was the throne room and the king of the painless Ologs. Painless marched towards Talion with death in his eyes. Frog blood leaped into action. All of this talk of spies had amounted to nothing. They had no idea Frog blood had been there. They had no idea he was in and amongst their ranks. Talion marched ahead, and then he heard a voice behind him. It was Baga. He'd come for his revenge. Talion once again used the power of his Nazgul ring to slow down time. He cleared out the room's defenses until it was just him, Baga the Frog blood, and Baga the undead all going up against the king of the painless orcs. He charged in. No amount of berserker orcs could stop him at this point. Talion had the deaths of all the members of his death squad on his mind. He would not let their sacrifice be in vain. He wanted to fight the painless and create an open for Baga, but there was one problem. His throne room was covered in fire. Baga was frozen in fear. There was nothing he could do. He was useless in this environment. It was all up to Talion. He was going to have to get rid of himself. He used the strength and the willpower of every orc that had got him here to land a devastating blow on the Tainless King. Orcs will never stop hunting you. Nazgul will never stop hunting you. You're dead, Ranger. So take my fortress. It will be your tomb. Bag of the frog blood yelled in victory as the head of the painless king clattered to the floor. They had done it. All of the fallen orcs had not died in vain. Talion then presented the head of the painless king to the remainder of his forces. The gains made by the Lord of Mordor are small and fleeting. We are the power in Mordor, and we It was done. The fort was conquered. They'd regained control of this region. The painless forces were scattered to the wind, but some did remain. It was up to Talion to appoint a new overlord. He could think of no one better. Sadly, Bag of the Alchemist wouldn't do. He wasn't strong enough yet. He was still undead and terrified of fire. This just wouldn't do as the overlord. Talion could think of no better soldier to rule over this fort than the Immortal. He'd definitely proven his worth. He'd rule the fort well as Baga's steward, until Baga could regain his former power. In the next episode of the story of Baga, with the painless fort destroyed, Baga can now focus his attention east. 
But of course, the unexpected happens. 